Is that the idea? Now, is it justice or is it revenge? At that point, right? If you're, not, and you're talking to people who know them, who can defend them at this point? It's all public opinion now. So it, it, no matter which way you look at it, and it's going to be Because people are going to start to not like them in an intense way for doing that, because it's just not the right thing to do. Looks like 50 Cent has been sitting on a lot of details for a while now, but it seems he's not the only one. The first woman to uncover the homo thugs. If there was an award for who has trolled Diddy the most since more details started to come up about him, it'll probably go to 50 Cent. The rapper, who is also a producer, seems to always find time in his busy schedule to call out the mogul anytime new details hit the media about him. In truth, 50 Cent does it to all his enemies, but in Diddy's case, it seems he has a keen interest. In the spirit of making sure the world knows he's serious about this case, he's been dropping some bombs about Diddy, the type of stuff even news outlets had no idea about, and it seems he has done it again. This time, his claims seem to involve another famous personality that might have tried what 50 is currently doing to Diddy. The person I'm talking about is Wendy Williams, and unlike 50 Cent who seems to be just as hardcore as Diddy, it appears the mogul may have gotten a hold of her. When I say Wendy was 50 Cent on Diddy's case before 50 himself took up the mantle, that is no exaggeration. The former talk show host who made a career out of calling out our richest and most famous people for their mishaps used to be hot on Diddy's tail. In fact, while it may appear like 50 Cent has a monopoly on the details of Diddy's life back in the day, Williams has been responsible for several reports that have come out about the mogul. To let you know how far coming this has been, all of these details I'm referring to happened in the 90s, and although it may have seemed like they buried the hatchet back then, the recent events of Wendy's life seem to prove otherwise. You might be wondering what kind of person would wait this long to get their revenge on someone else. Well, that's the same kind of person that has been named in multiple lawsuits about attacking anyone who stood against him. One as for the why, well, seeing as the news is starting to catch up on stuff that Williams had already figured out years back, who do you think they would be most likely to contact for more information about Diddy? 50 Cent seems to be holding proof that Diddy may have found out about that, and considering the damage she did to his reputation before the authorities got involved, it seems he wasn't willing to take chances. Now she's lost her show, her money, and her husband, all in one swing, and people are saying there's nothing natural about all the disasters befalling her. As I mentioned, Wendy has stepped on a lot of toes in her time exposing the juiciest details about the lives of some of our favorite celebrities. While there's probably only a handful of people that could have been responsible for her current predicament, in the subset of those that may or may not have had a hand in it, only Diddy actually has a history of violence mixed with strong-arming people. The most compelling proof of all, he's attacked her in the past as well. You know, staying off my, my social devices is too much cooning and buffooning. If what is happening today had happened three years ago, Diddy's face would be the only thing on the Hot Topics segment of Wendy Williams' daytime show, but it seems the mogul has already made sure that never happens. According to the news, Williams has lost a lot more than her show in recent years. The former host, who is credited for pushing daytime television to where it is today, has been fighting for her life over the past couple of years. Williams has been open about her personal struggles, including suffering miscarriages, battling addiction, and living with Graves' disease. Beautiful. So what you got to say for the camera? Uh, he's out by getting stuff. I'm just waiting for him to come back. It seems everything that's happened to Williams over the past couple of years, leading her to where she is at the moment, might have been targeted at making her lose her show. And guess who is alleged to be seated at the center of the accusations? But don't just take it, I'll paint you a timeline. Back in February 2018, Williams canceled a few episodes of her show after experiencing flu-like symptoms. Wendy is still experiencing flu-like symptoms, and so she can rest up and get better, we have decided to cancel tapings the rest of the week," a spokesperson for the show told Page Six at the time. She later clarified that she did not have the flu but felt flu-ish, and told fans that this was the first time she had taken a sick day in 25 years. Williams was back on air a week later, but her situation then only went from bad to worse. 
The famed host had several hospitalizations in January 2019 when her Graves' disease, an autoimmune disorder that can cause an overactive thyroid, forced her to take a hiatus from her talk show. As news outlets reported, she endured a long hospital stay as she got her health in order. Wendy will be under the strict supervision of her physicians, and as part of her care, there will be significant time spent in the hospital, her family said in a statement at the time. Despite her strong desire to return, she is taking a necessary extended break from her show to focus on her personal and physical well-being. In the end, she didn't just lose her show, she also started to have financial troubles. The recent documentary on her even touches on it as she spells it out herself to the fans. I have no money, she declares before addressing fans. And let me tell you something, if it happens to me, it can happen to you. I have no money, and I'm gonna tell you something, if it happens to me, it could happen to you. This seems to have been a function of the people in her own team hiring other people she didn't even know. And as it would turn out, some of them had been stealing from her and making unauthorized payments. Around you, stealing money from me, getting money, whatever the case may be. Enough. She has people around who are yes people and allowing this to continue. It got so bad that Wells Fargo had to freeze her account and then took it up a notch by getting her a court-appointed guardian to manage her money. Later down the line, Williams reportedly realized the guardian was no better than the other people around her as her funds were still depleting. Asking questions about my money, suddenly Lori Schiller has got no response regarding my money. I want my money, this is not fair. And Wells Fargo has no questions when I tell you all of this may have been Diddy's doing, these are more than just wild accusations. As I stated earlier, Williams has proven over the years that she knows Diddy more than anyone else in the game. During Williams' media career, the queen of entertainment news and gossip, who has never shied away from addressing celebrity rumors, tried to raise the alarm about Combs, and her ongoing beef with the music mogul may have even caused her career setbacks. In the words of one social media user this past week, the thing she said about Diddy was known years ago. Wendy Williams stayed on his neck. Williams and Combs have a long and contentious history. The drama between the pair began in the 90s when Williams spoke out against Diddy on her radio show Hot 97 on multiple occasions. In 1998, Williams was fired from the radio show and has maintained a belief that Diddy played a role in it. Despite parting ways with the radio station, Williams found success with her talk show, The Wendy Williams Show, which premiered in 2008. During her daytime TV reign, she covered a wide array of Diddy news, including his various legal dramas, and even bringing the drama to her doorstep. Before getting fired from Hot 97, Williams claimed in 2005 during her radio show, The Wendy Williams Experience, that she was almost jumped by the girl group Total, who were signed to Diddy's record label, Bad Boy Records. Williams recalled the alleged moment and hinted that Diddy was involved during a 2019 episode of her talk show. And them, them total were downstairs waiting and everybody upstairs at the radio station is looking down, egging it on, waiting for something to go down. I Once upon a time, there was a music mogul who sent his all-girl group to beat my A in front of the radio station. Fact, she claimed. I finished my shift, round up my headphones, put my bag on my arm, and I see everybody lined up at the window looking down on the sidewalk. Williams explained that she was dating ex-husband Kevin Hunter at the time, and they had encountered the musical act. I find this girl group, jump out of a gypsy cab to come after me, she alleged, to beat my A. For what? You know what I said was true. You all were broke and you were living in the projects, and that was that. Knight in shining armor screeched up in his car just out of nowhere. Didn't even know. I didn't even know what was about to happen. I'm standing in the door like what? And I'm literally about to go through now. But the rap exec didn't just stop at having people jump her. He took it a step further. During a 2013 interview with Vlad TV, Williams tiptoed around her firing from Hot 97 and how it revolved around her speculation about the hip hop musician's S. There was a radio personality once upon a time and her name was Wendy Williams and she was practically burned at the stake for talking about such and now it's all come full circle, she teased. There were many situations back in the day in my career and it's all coming full circle. Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time, her name was Wendy Williams and uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. And Why would he go through all of this? 
Williams apparently got her hands on some pretty damaging information about the man. The host had a theory that Combs had engaged in S activity with other men after she received a photo of a man allegedly pulling Combs's shorts down while he was on vacation in Cancun. The dude was playing with Puff. He went behind him and grabbed his trunks and pulled them down. Some girls that was taking pictures. Took that picture and emailed it back to Wendy. This seems to have been what forced the rapper's hand. Even Jean Deal confirmed her claims, stating that Diddy had contacted the executives at Hot 97 back in the day and told them he would starve their station till it folded unless Wendy was, as she put it, burned at the stake. The power Combs had with the radio stations in New York, MFs didn't breathe hard if Combs didn't want them to. Combs got one of the hottest DJs off Hot 97 because she wanted to put up a picture of him getting his pants pulled down, Deal said. Combs told Hot 97 if they didn't get rid of her before he got back in New York, that they was not going to get any music from any of his friends, any of the record label's executives that was cool with him, everyone was going to boycott their station. This was several years ago, and we could argue that they have probably moved on from that brawl by now, but remember when I said Williams probably had the most information on Diddy? She proved that when old footage of her talking about his turbulent relationship with Cassie got out. You know, my thing about when you date a mogul is that it's really difficult to avoid them because if you use your head, you never know when they're gonna pop up on the scene. She first spoke about it after Diddy and Cassie briefly broke up in 2015. Williams speculated that there was a balance of power issue between the record producer and singer. Years following that, when the pair called it quits for good in 2018, Williams was initially rooting for the pair to get back together since Diddy publicly declared his love for Cassie on Williams' talk show. However, after seeing Diddy attempt to win Cassie back on social media, Williams labeled his behavior as manipulation. I suggest don't use social media though to reach out. I think this was a grand overture from Puffy. I don't believe he really wants her back, she said at the time. I believe he probably treated her at some point like a possession. If you really cared, then you'd reach out privately, not publicly. Less than a year later, Cassie accused him of attacking her through those years they were together. Coincidence? Seems unlikely. Anyway, seeing as the authorities are now after him and would probably subpoena anyone they think might have information about him, what better way to stay secure than to take out the one person with the most information about him? Tell us what you think. That's it. Goodbye.